Melvin and Howard is a 1980 comedy directed by Jonathan Demme and starring Paul Lamott, Mary Steenburgen, Pamela Reed, Elizabeth Cheshire, Michael J. Pollard, Charles Napier, John Glover, Dabney Coleman, and Jason Robards. An Oasis! Is that Evil Knievel? Fail. Melvin is driving in the middle of nowhere when nature calls. Well, finders keepers. I'm gonna get you some help. No, no, doctor. Yeah, there's a town about three miles up no, the road. Yeah. No. Yeah, what happens in Vegas or outside Vegas stays outside Vegas. The pair discuss life, and the mystery dude finally drops a name. I'm Howard Hughes. Oh, I see. I wrote this song. And no. I... Fucking musicians. You wanna hear it? No, I don't. Oh, you're going to anyway. Santa called his elves together to soup up his old sleigh. So Rudolph and the other reindeer could rest on Christmas Day. That's the Wabash Cannonball. You got it? Uh, no, I, I don't know. Listen, man, you sing this or you walk. So it's gas, ass, or duets? Las Vegas! Melvin drops him off, but not before doing a little panhandling. Looks like Melvin really likes junk. He climbs into bed and he proceeds to get it on with his wife, Linda. Repoed! Are they ditching his ass? Hey, where are we going? Yes, they are ditching his ass. We go immediately to some domestic violence, and Linda is now also ditched. The pacing of this movie is way off. I thought she'd already ditched Melvin that morning. They make some sandwiches, and Linda sends her daughter Darcy back to live with Melvin. Melvin then hitches a ride to Reno with Michael J. Pollard, and steps into a strip club. That's my wife! Melvin ruins the show, and a fight ensues. Are they back together? Joe Spinell! That's your official notification of an interlocutory decree. It'll be final in six weeks. Oh. Watch that. Keep your ring if you want to. I guess they're not back together. Then Melvin gets a call. Could Darcy come down and see me? Are you drunk? No, I'm not drunk. Uh, are you pregnant? He's a fucking psychic! How do I look? Fat. And Linda and Melvin are married again. Did they let kids into casinos back then? Milk! You remember that engine you blowed up your first week? Not now, fellas. I was talking to Mr. Rockwood about it. Now, the only thing we can figure out to do is the duck. What the fuck? It's a baby. It appears that take two on the marriage is going great. Bell peppers. Linda, you know I don't like bell peppers. I got you keep bell getting bell peppers. I, I don't like them. I got bell peppers. Melvin then gets the idea of putting Linda on a game show. Hey, it's the Colonel from Boogie Nights. Linda wins and everything is great with the couple. Uh, the Sentinel is 59900 and the Landlord is 44000 a $59,000 piece of real estate in California back then is now worth a gajillion dollars. Linda tries to save the money, but Melvin goes out and buys a Cadillac and a bow. So they leave him again. 
This looks like the neighborhood from Poltergeist. I, I, you want a song? All right, I got a song. Oh no, is he gonna sing that shitty song? No, it's a different shitty song. I'm a milkman for Rockwood and everything's okay. Well, my truck's kinda old and it's awful slow. Well, women love musicians. I got a cousin up in Utah, lost his lease on a gas station. We run it right. We get a thousand a month clear. This escalated quickly. And Bonnie and Melvin moved to Utah to run a gas station. Did they steal a fucking milk truck? That's five. Five dollars in gas back then would be the equivalent of a gajillion gallons today. Howard Hughes is dead. But here's Charles Napier. Oh, the matches are free. Oh, that's a buck. It's a buck. Uh, uh, wait, let's see. Camel's 50 cents. 50 cents? Those cigarettes would cost you a gajillion dollars today. A mysterious document is dropped, and it's a will. So Melvin drops in a pile of Mormon mail. Well, looks like everybody found out. There's some gunplay and we get to court with Daniel Clamp calling bullshit and Dabney fucking Coleman is the judge. On July 6th, they're going to determine the validity of the will. Like he says, it's the only will we got. That plus the positive testimony by the handwriting experts. I think the will's going to be admitted to probate. He won? They're going to fight it through every court they can. I mean, I mean the relative Suma. Meanwhile, the government will be taking out taxes. The state will be taking out taxes. Lawyers taking out legal fees. I mean, it doesn't sound like he won. Melvin gets the kids for the summer and not again. No, Melvin didn't get any money, but they did make a movie out of his story, I guess. Melvin and Howard has a great story in it, but it's paced for shit. It's an interesting look at a lifelong loser who doesn't win the big one in the end. He's still a fucking loser. And he knows it. Jonathan Demme directs the film beautifully, and the acting's great. The thing is, with this film, it's kind of the opposite of there's not enough plot to fill this time. With Melvin and Howard, there's too much plot, and they probably could have extended this another 10 to 15 minutes. It's not a great film, but it's pretty good, and it's interesting to notice that we made people instant celebrities even back then. I have an aversion to song. That's what makes you an old asshole. <laughs>